Hey everyone, it's Mike here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn a sketch into a vector illustration using Affinity Designer. But before you start working on any vector illustration project, it's always a good idea to decide on the dimensions of the illustration. You want to ask yourself, what is this illustration for? Is it for a poster, a website, or a wallpaper? For your smartphone like the one I'll be demonstrating in this video. So once you find out what the dimensions of the illustrations are, you're less likely to encounter any compositional or scalability issues later on. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's open up a new document by going to File, New, and under Devices, I'm going to be using the iPhone X XS preset and click Create. Prior to this, I have already made a sketch that fits this dimension. So let's bring in that sketch by going to File, Place, and then Locate our file. Let's drop it into our artboard and drag it into position like so. Now it's time to break down the illustration into smaller parts. I'm going to add three different layers because I want to isolate the background, middle ground, and foreground. When I create vector illustrations, I prefer to work from the background to the foreground because I like to think of it as if I was working with construction paper. Simply put, you're just laying the shapes on top of one another. Now that we have our three layers, let's go over to our color selector by double clicking on it and pick out our color palette. Since I want to convey a night scene, I'm going to choose a purple color scheme for this illustration. I'm going to start with the darkest purple to the lightest and adding it to my color palette one by one by selecting the color and clicking on the add color to palette button. Let's go over to our Layers palette, and just for good practice, let's lock our Sketch layer so that we don't edit this layer by accident. Now, let's get started on our background layer. Using the Rectangle tool, I'm going to start off creating a rectangle that conforms to the size of the artboard. Then, I'm going to add a gradient to it. but I want the darkest purple to be on top, so I'm going to click the reverse gradient button, just like that. Now I'm going to adjust the gradient colors real quick by double clicking on the gradient fill button and select the darkest purple node and select the darkest purple color in my color palette. And then I do the same with the lightest purple node and select the lightest purple in my color palette, which is already selected. All right, now that we have the sky layer completed, let's lower the opacity so we can see through it. That way we are able to add in the clouds, stars, and moon. Let's start making some clouds by heading over to the Shape tool. I'm going to be using the Segment tool to create the shape of the cloud. Once the shape is created, a little red node will appear. I'm going to adjust the shape by clicking and dragging the red node just like that. Now I'm going to fill it with a light purple color and turn off the stroke. Then I'm going to make duplicate and resize the shape to form a cloud. Once you have the shapes together, you can combine all of them by using the Add button from the geometry function on the toolbar. But let's undo that real quick. 
so that I can duplicate a segment of it and use it to create other clouds. Now you have an idea of how to fuse or add multiple shapes, I'm going to speed this process up and I'll check back with you shortly. Alright, now that we have our clouds, let's head over to our shape tool again and select the star tool. Now we can create some stars. Let's position this one in place and then duplicate it. You can change the number of points on the stars like so. And as you can see, the star now has four points. Let's resize this and create another duplicate. If you zoom in, similar to the segment shape, these stars have red nodes to them as well. You can adjust it to make the star look thicker or thinner. So now that you know how to create and adjust the stars, I'm going to speed up this starry night process and I'll check back with you shortly. Okay, now that we have our stars all in place, let's create a moon using the ellipse tool, like so. Then we're going to create a crescent shape to it as well. I prefer to flip the crescent shape horizontally and turn on the snapping tool so that it will align to the edge of the ellipse. Now, Let's select a light shade of purple for the crescent. Let's go one more shade lower. Perfect. And now it's time to add some color to our stars. Once we're finished, let's zoom back out and turn the opacity of our sky layer back up to 100%. And finally, our background is now completed. Next, let's hide our background layer, then select the middle ground layer, and we're going to start working on our middle ground, which are pretty much all of the mountains in the sketch. First, I'm going to switch over to the stroke color and turn off the fill color temporarily. That way, I can see the shape that I will be creating with the pen tool. We're going to start with the furthest mountain because as I mentioned earlier in the video, making vector illustrations is a lot like working with construction paper. So let's start by tracing the line art of the mountain. And it's completely fine if I go outside the sketch lines because, again, we'll be covering it up with another layer. If we swap the stroke color with the fill color, you will get a preview of how it will look like. Now that you have an idea of how the layers work, I'm going to speed up this process and I'll check back with you shortly. Alright, now that we have our mountains, 
let's add a linear gradient over the non-snow areas of the mountains. And now our middle ground is done. If you ever looked at a photo of mountains, the closest one is usually the darkest in value, and the farther you go back, the value becomes lighter. We finally made it to the foreground. In this layer, I will use the darkest purple in our color palette as the primary color for the foreground. I'm going to use the pen tool again to trace over the rabbit on the cliff. Now it's time to create some trees. Since the trees all look the same, I will create one tree and replicate the rest. Instead of tracing the entire tree with the pen tool, a trick that I like to use is to create half of the tree with a pen tool like this. Then I will duplicate it by holding down the Option or Alt key if you're using Windows, drag it over, then go up to the toolbar and click on the Flip Horizontal button. Now I just need to make the nodes touch each other using the Node tool. Just like that. Then we're going to select both of the pieces and click the Add button from the Geometry function. Keep in mind this trick only works on symmetrical things. Now it's time to duplicate the trees. We're going to hold down the Option or Alt key again and drag and resize the second tree. Then we're going to resize to conform with our sketch. We're going to repeat this step by duplicating it again and resizing it. You can also use the Command J or Control J if you're using Windows. And what it will do is it will create a duplicate for you. All right, now it's time to fill in the foreground with the darkest purple from our color palette. So I want to add a bit of a highlight on the rabbit. I'm going to create some highlight shapes to emphasize the areas where the light hits, such as the hands and the feet. Let's also add a highlight on the ear as well. Now, our foreground is completed. Time to turn on the middle ground and background layers. Let's zoom back out to view the bigger picture. And from what I can see, I can see that the snow on the mountains blend in with the background. So I'm going to change the snow on the mountain to an even lighter shade. That looks so much better. Let's zoom back out again. And now our illustration is done. Well, that wraps it up. And I hope you all enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. Let me know in the comment section below what you think or what kind of tutorials that you look forward to seeing in future videos. And if you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe to check out what other creative projects or tutorials I will be working on next. 
on that note, I'll see you next time.